thank you, I honor you, I bless you on this evening, oh God. Thank you, oh God. For all things do work together for the good, for those that love you and are called according to your purpose. Be thy greatly magnified. In Jesus' name, amen. In Ephesians chapter 3, starting with verse 14. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Continue. From whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. Paul is saying to us uh, through this script that he bows his knees to the Father and Lord Jesus Christ. And that there's a family connected to the Father and Jesus Christ. And, you know, I was in, the, in my garden, um, I think it was a week or so ago, and I'm pulling weeds. And uh, even though the, the garden looks beautiful to people that come to see it or come to my house, but it doesn't look that good to me because I am the gardener. I am pulling weeds on a constant level. So the opportunity to really enjoy the garden, it, it's not as, um, it, it's not seen by me as much as it is other people. But nonetheless, I go to the garden alone <laughs> while the dew is still on the roses. And, uh, I'm, and I, you know, of course, I'm doing what I'm doing, but it, when you're doing something like this, it allows your mind to kind of drift. And that's sometimes in a good way. So I heard an impression in my head, and the impression was um, uh, I have an OG in this family. <laughs> and, uh, and I looked up and I said, you, who, um, what, are you, what are you saying to me? So the name of this little Bible study is the OG in this family. Continue. You can start from 14 and we'll read through. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height, to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So the OG in this family that God has uh, grafted us into is, of course, Jesus the Christ. He is the original gangster <laughs> in, in this family uh, that God has drafted us into. And I'm going to read because uh, probably some old people may understand uh, this whole concept of being an OG, uh, but I'm sure most young people understand this concept because this is a somewhat um, um, modern interpretation of the word gangster. So you can start reading. This is coming out of the slang dictionary. <laughs> okay. <laughs> OG, come on. OG, or original gangster, or real OG, or triple OG. Oh, like, look here. Let me, let me just say this from the beginning. You already know Jesus is triple OG. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you already know this. Okay. Come, just coming off the break. Okay. <laughs> Continue. OG is a slang term for someone who's incredibly exceptional, authentic, or old school. Come on up in here. I'm just trying to tell you, Jesus the Christ is OG. For real, prime time, big time. Okay? All of this fits him. He's exceptional, he's authentic, and he's old school. Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and always. Come on. It can be earnestly used for a legend like Michael Jordan, or more ironically, like for that friend who can unwrap a starburst with their mouth. <laughs> he can do everything and anything. The tiniest little things in our lives that we think God is not interested in, he's interested in it. Because, you know, because he's an OG looking for gangsters. Okay? <laughs> Come on. 
OG can also praise someone or something that is considered authentic and excellent, often in an admirably old school or classic way. According to Urban Dictionary's most popular definition, OG is an abbreviation of the words original gangster, which is what the term was used for at first. Since then, however, it has also been used to simply mean that something or someone is original, meaning the first of its kind. Scripture is very clear. This OG is the first of its kind in Romans chapter 8, verse 29. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. He might be the firstborn. He is the original. He is the uh, actual. He is the first. So he's the first of his kind. That's why he's called in, in slang dictionary interpretation, the original gangster in Colossians verse one, verse 15 and 18. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. He is the firstborn of all creation. He was here first. God gave him a body and, and put his spirit in it. And he came to be the firstborn of the whole creation to show us that in our body, we could become a gangster, but not the original gangster because he holds that title. He is the triple gangster. Come on. Verse 18. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning the firstborn from the dead. He's the beginning. He's the firstborn of the dead. The original continued. That in all things, he may have the preeminence. First Corinthians 15, verse 20 and 23. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who He's have fallen asleep. He's the first asleep. fruit of those. Continue. I'm sorry to break in. Verse 23. But each one in his own order. Christ the first fruits, afterward those who are Christ's at his coming. So he's the first fruit, but after the after him is us in our order. In James chapter 1, verse 18. Of his own will he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. He, we are the first fruits of his creatures, but he is the original. That's why I call him the OG of this family, the original gangster, the, the genuine one, the actual one, the one that's honest, the one that's pure, the one that's real, the ones that's true. Continue with this reading here. While its definition has changed slightly through the years, at its core, calling someone an OG is an expression of deep of respect. Deep respect. So when I call Jesus to Christ, oh gee, it is from a well of honor, of deep respect, of admiration. Continue. Deep respect or admiration for someone. It can refer to someone trailblazing. He's a trailblazer. Uh, a blazer. Continue. Or innovative. He's an innovator. Continue. Such as an artist who popularized a musical trend or a fashion style. Oh, he's style. more than that. Because the songs that we sing about Christ, he's the one that inspires them in every country, in every tribe, in every nation. All you hear is his name. Come on. This is the closest to the term's initial definition of being original or first at something. He was the first we already read that rose from the dead. Continue. OG can also mean exceptional or the best in a particular field. In this use case, OG is synonymous with GOAT, G-O-A-T, or... Greatest of all time. That's our Jesus. The OG in this family. Come on. Something to be proud of. Something to look up to. Someone to honor. Continue. You might say Tiger Woods is oh, an OG. Oh, we can OG. move on from there. Start, go to the next paragraph. Using OG is pretty simple. Use it to refer to people who you feel are original, authentic, or exceptional. That's it. Thank you. So now that we establish who the OG is, the characteristics that are associated with his name, exceptional, excellent, outstanding, superior, un 
equaled, authentic, actual, faithful, genuine, honest, original, pure, real, true. That's our Jesus. OG is an expression of deepest respect and honor. Psalm 66, verse 1 through 4. To the chief musician, a song, a psalm. Make a joyful shout to God, all the earth. Sing out the honor of his name. Sing out the honor. So we have nothing to be ashamed of, to be shy about. When we talk about the OG of all times, when we talk about Jesus, the Christ, he is to be deeply respected by the Christian, honored in everything that we do. We are to imitate his gangster characteristics. Continue. Make his praise glorious. Say to God, how awesome are your works. How awesome are your works. Continue. Through the greatness of your power, your enemies shall submit themselves to you. All the earth shall worship you and sing praises to you. They shall sing praises to your name. So Selah. with deepest respect and honor, we give and assign and promote our God with this slang definition of gangster. We call him original. We say he is the gangster of all time. Admiration, Revelation 1, 17, 8 through 18. We are to admire him. Look at his exploit. Look at the stuff he did when he was on this earth walking and talking as a mere man. He is gangster up in here. I'm trying to tell you. In Revelation 1, 17 through 18. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, do not be afraid. I am the first and the Come last. Come on, gangster. <laughs> he said, I'm the first and the last. Come on. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of Hades and of Do death. Do you know who had uh, the keys of Hades and death? A would-be gangster? <laughs> Come on up in here. But to show you that our, our God, Jesus is the OG of the OG. He got them keys from him. Come on, that's real gangster. Where you can take something from someone that has power, that has an anointing, that has strength, that's crafty, that's wise too. You know what OG did? Snatch the keys. Not anymore. He said, I'm the original up in here. In John chapter 8, the gospel of John. Chapter 8, starting with verse, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to give you a glimpse of how gangster this gangster is. That's all I'm trying to do. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning, he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery. Now see, this, this, is, this, this is what I mean when I say how clever he is. How crafty he is. How discerning he is. Because there was a crafty one in the garden back in the day in Genesis. He was more craftier than all the creatures that God had made. But look here. OG came on the scene and showed him how crafty he is. And anyone that comes from that side and think they smart, our OG said, I'm smarter, I'm craftier, I'm wiser. Continue. And when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded, uh, commanded us that, should be, that such should be stoned. But what do you say? This they said, testing him, that they might have something of which to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down and wrote on the ground with his finger, as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He that is without sin, cast the first stone. That's a gangster. <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> That's, I, I, time will fail to tell. I don't have enough time That's what I'm, to tell you all the, the ways Jesus was. He healed folks. He delivered folks. He raised folks from the dead. 
He knew how to answer fool in his folly. The Bible says the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of men. See, that's gangster. So Jesus was the OG in the family, someone that we can model our lives after and become gangster, but we'll never be the original. He is. And he's also a trailblazer. Hebrews 10, verse 7. Then I said, Behold, I have come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me to do your will, O God. See, he said, I've come to do your will. I'm getting ready to blaze a trail in first Peter chapter 2 21 that other people can follow in. See, that's oh that's an OG. Somebody that don't they 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 create their own trail in order that people can have a way to walk. See, you can look up to this tra trailblazer in first Peter chapter 2 verse 21. For to this you were called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps. That we can follow in his steps. We want to be like Jesus. We want to be like the original. We want to be like this gangster. Walk in his steps. And you become gangster. <laughs> People will know that you have been with him. That I have been with him. He's an innovator. That means bold, daring, courageous, even revolutionary. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 through 8. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who, being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself, but made himself of no reputation for the cause. See, he came, it's written in the volume of the book for him to make a trail, to be a trailblazer for the cause. See, that's bold, that's courageous, that's revolutionary. Con continue. Taking the form of a bond Of a slave. And See, that's bold. To become like the people that you're going to represent. To get into a body that's full of frailty that's weak, that's sinful. But look how courageous he was. He said, God, I can do it because I trust you in this body. So he takes on the, the, the form of a slave and he came in the likeness of men and he did what? And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death. You know how many people have burned at the stake for the cause? People that have gone to jail for the cause. People that have been persecuted for the cause. But Jesus said, I'm the OG in my family. All that, I was pinned to a cross for the cause because I'm an innovator, I'm bold, I'm courageous. Therefore, we look up to him. He's exceptional, which means excellent, another name for it. In Psalms 8.1, to the chief musician on the instrument of Gath, a psalm of David. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. How excellent is your name in all the earth. This OG is excellent in all the earth. And Lord made him our OG because he gave his body to be used by God. But Jesus looks up at God and tells God every day that he was with us. You're my OG. Come on. That's how they work. That's how they roll. Jesus is our OGs. And Jesus looked up at the Father and said, but you're my OG. You, the Father, <laughs> in Jesus' eyes. It's the original, 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 original gangster. Come on. In 2 Peter chapter 1, 17. Where he received from God the Father honor and glory when such a voice came to him from the excellent glory. So there was a voice that came to him from the 
excellent glory to tell us that Jesus was excellent. Tell, say it. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. He is excellent. The original gangster is excellent. There's no fault in him at all. There's no darkness in him at all. He's all about being authentic. He's all about being the truth. He's all about being prime time, premier, honest, pure, real. He is the real deal. We can look up to him. We can admire him. We can say to him with deepest respect, you're king of kings and lord of lords. You are all that. In my personal life, I look up to you, original gangster, someone that's exceptional, someone who left glory to come down here to show the love of the Father and the burden of the Son. You are the OG in this family, in my family. You are the best. That means you are the supreme. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17. Now to the King eternal, immortal, To the invisible. King eternal, immortal, continue. Invisible. Invisible. To God who alone is wise. To God who alone is wise. You talking about OG. Come on. Be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. You are supreme. You are his majesty. You are all that. We look up at you. And when our eyes are open, we are inspired and we can do anything because he did it first. Jesus has been my OG since the day of my salvation. We have a special relationship. As a Christian, you can have a special relationship with this OG purely your own in Isaiah chapter 49, 13 through 16. Sing, O heavens, be joyful, O earth, and break out in singing, O mountains, for the Lord has comforted his people and will have mercy on his afflicted. But Zion said, the Lord has forsaken me and my Lord has forgotten me. Can a woman forget her nursing child? Yes. Continue. And not have compassion on the son of her womb? Yes. Surely they may forget. Ha ha. Yet I will not forget you. He said, I will not forget you. You talking about OG. Come on. He said, I will not forget you. You can have a special, your own relationship with God. People can do a lot of things. But Jesus said, I, what I will not do is forget you or my child. Continue. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hand. Don't you see the nail prints in my hand? What I would do for you? <laughs> Your, Your walls. walls are continually before me. When you think I'm not there, I'm as close. Just mention my name. Just mention my name. And I'll be there. Because I never left. I can't go anywhere. You and I are tied together. We are locked in arms together. You and me. That's the OG in the family. That's the relationship that one can have with God. And they, in, in the Old Testament, the Lord dropped this man's name in my spirit while I was reading that day. Because they are types and shadows. I have a bunch of them, but I can't get to them all. So I have to just do a couple of them. And for you to understand that in the Old Testament, that these individuals were types and shadows of gangsters. <laughs> they really were, according to the Urban Dictionary and the slang definition, slang definition of the word gangster. And one of the gangsters in this family in type and shadow, from the time he was born, he was going to be a trailblazer, blazer, an innovator, 
He was crafty. But one of the things that caught my eye about him is the deep respect he had for God. Once he understood it was God that was leading him on his journey. And in Genesis 28, starting with verse 10. Now Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. So he came to a certain place and stayed there all night because the sun had set. And he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head, and he lay down in that place to sleep. Then he dreamed, and behold, a ladder was set up on the earth, and its top reached to heaven. And there the angels of God were, were ascending, ascending and descending on us. What a vision that was given him. Continue. And behold, the Lord stood above it and said, I am the Lord God of Abraham, your father, and the God of Isaac. The land on which you lie, I will give to you and your descendants. Also your descendants shall be as the dust of the earth. You shall spread abroad to the west and the east, to the north and the south. And in you and in your seed, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Behold, I am with you and will keep you wherever you go. I'm with you. Believe it. I'm with you. Continue. And will bring you back to this land. For I will not leave you until I have done what I have spoken to you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. Then Jacob rose early in the morning and took the stone that he had put at his head, set it up as a pillar, and poured oil on top of it. He, when he understood that God was in relationship with him. He built an altar. Continue. And he called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of that city had been Luz previously. And he made a vow saying, if God will be with me and keep me in this way that I'm going and give me bread to eat and clothing to put on so that I come back to my father's house in peace, then the Lord shall be my God. And this stone which I have set as a pillar, shall be God's house. And all that you give me, I will surely give a tenth back. That's a gangster move. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> I had to get here. When, when God shows himself in your life, people that understand what an original gangster is. They make a gangster move. They say, God, I'm going to give you back. And we cry about 10%. Are you for real? This is an Old Testament saint. He had enough sense to understand if God be with you, you better find a way to give something back to God. Someone said, and my prophet and pastor, uh, uh, Mr. Harley, I call him sometimes, once said to me, what do you give a man that has everything? Something. Mm. You give a man, you give God, who's God, who's an original gangster, triple gangster. You better find something to give to God. 10% should just be a beginning. In the New Testament, it said with all your heart, all your might, and all your strength. But that's a gangster move. You know, even gangsters in the natural understand that. Mm -hmm. That you have to give something to keep getting it on. <laughs> if you get where I'm coming from, how much more so-called spiritual gangsters, how much more Christian gangster, gangsters. Jesus gave his life. He didn't give 10%. He gave his life. That's gangster. That's all I want you to see. That is gangster. That's all. <laughs> Look at this Jacob who his name means supplanter or deceiver. He tricked his brother Esau out of his birthright because he was crafty. So he would. So but as a result, Jacob was always afraid of Esau. 
And he had to meet him and he knew it one day, but he was always afraid of the day that he would meet his brother. But he's crafty. <laughs> In Genesis 32, starting with verse one, and we're not going to read the whole chapter, but let's start with verse one. So Jacob went on his way, and the angels of God met him. When Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's camp. Who met him? The angels of God met him. You know what? When you walk with God and you give him what you got, it's amazing the things that you see. Don't expect to see a whole lot when you don't give a lot. <laughs> I'm just saying. You can hear about somebody else seeing something and feeling something and hearing something. Do you have the nerve to get jealous? But you don't give anything <laughs> or very little. And then when you do it, it's begrudgingly. So this man, nobody told him to give a 10%. 10%. But he was gangster. So he got it. <laughs> and so he is. He's seeing angels. Continue. When Jacob saw them, he said, This is God's camp. And he called the name of that place Mahanaim. Then Jacob sent messengers before him to Esau, his brother, in the land of Seir. Because this was the day he was going to meet his brother. After, with craft, getting the birthright, with trickery, with deception, continue. The country of Edom. And he commanded them, saying, Speak thus to my lord Esau. Thus your servant Jacob says, I have dwelt with Laban. So he said, I'm sorry. So he has all this stuff. He said, I got oxen, donkeys, flocks, and all this kind of stuff. And verse 7. So Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed. Because J Esau said, I'm coming to see you. Okay, go ahead. And he divided the people that were with him and the flocks and herds and camels into two companies. And he said, if Esau comes to the one company and attacks it, then the other company which is left will so escape. So he divided his faults. So he sent one one way and the other the other way. Continue. Then Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord, who said to me, Return to your country and to your family, and I will deal well with you. I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which you have shown your servant. Gangster. <laughs> he got it. He said, I am not even worthy. Our problem is, is that we think we're worthy. And when we understand that we are the transgressors, then we then and say to ourselves, when stuff go down or when stuff don't go down, I'm not worthy of the least of your mercies. Jesus humbled himself and became a slave. That's why he's the original gangster. And not us. But if we want to follow in this trailblazer steps, we have to understand we're not worthy of the price that the original gangster made for us the price that he paid. So Jacob understand that this is a type and shadow of us understanding how we should walk with our God, how we should approach him. Continue. For I crossed over this Jordan with my staff, and now I have become two companies. Deliver me, I pray, from the hand of my brother, from the hand of Esau, for I fear him, lest he come and attack me and the mother He's with authentic. my children. See? He's authentic. He tells him the truth. He's pure when he goes to talk to God. He doesn't play games. He said, look, I'm afraid. If you don't help me, if you don't, and I already know, I did something to make this boy mad, <laughs> real mad at me. So let me humble myself and appeal to you. See, that's gangster. That's understanding. How many times the original gangster had to humble himself? Continue. For you said, I will surely treat you well and make your descendants as the sand of the sea, which cannot be numbered for multitude. So In he, verse 13. So he lodged there that same night and took what came to his hand as a present for Esau, his brother. Look at, look at the way he's appeasing. The Bible said, agree with your adversary quickly while you have him in the way. See, when somebody is your adversary and you see a way forward for you and that individual, agree. 
That's gangster. So he, he, he already understood. He said, let me give this man a present. Maybe that will soften his approach to me. Continue. 200 female goats and 20 male goats. And it went on and on. And, and then we're going to go down to verse 21. So the present went on over before him, but he himself lodged that night in the camp. And he arose that night and took his two wives, his two female servants, and his eleven sons, and crossed over the ford of Jabbok. He took them, sent them over the brook, and sent over what he had. Now, this is the individual that was dropped in my spirit, is being really, really gangster. You know, I mean, he had the fortitude, the tenacity to wrestle. And that's gangster, especially when you move it from the natural to the spiritual, and when an individual knows how to wrestle in, in prayer and not let God go until an answer comes. See, that's gangster. And this is a type and shadow in my mind of wrestling with principalities, powers, rulers in the darkness of this world that you don't let go until the dawn breaks. Come on, read. Then Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until the breaking of day. Now when he saw that he did not prevail against him, he touched the socket of his hip, and the socket of Jacob's hip was out of joint as he wrestled with him. And he said, Let me go, for the day breaks. But he said, I will not I will let you go. not. <laughs> I will not let you go until you bless. See, that's gangster stuff. I won't let you go. The Bible says Jesus wrestled in prayer so much so that the blood dripped from his forehead till he got the victory. And sometimes we're not gangster enough in prayer. We have to travail and prevail. We, we can't give up until the Lord gives us an answer until he blesses us, until he turned the tide, until he gets us through the water and through the fire that we have to go through the storm and jump over a wall and run with the footmen. We have to do it. And in this case, that was Jacob's testimony to honor God, to be crafty, to humble himself, to be an innovator. Here's another person as we move on to Joshua chapter 2, starting with verse 1. And, and my girl was gangster. I'm trying to tell you up in here. She was, my girl was gangster in Joshua <laughs> chapter 2, starting with verse 1. Now Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out two men from Acacia Grove to spy secretly, saying, Go. View the land, especially Jericho. So they went and came to the house of a harlot named Rahab. Look, this girl is a businesswoman, okay? <laughs> She's straight up business. And she understands the mind of, 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 of being crafty, of being wise, of getting, uh, if you will, the best buck <laughs> for the... For, yeah, bang for your buck or buck for your service. Come on, I'm just saying. She understood all of this kind of stuff, but she had a deep respect for the God of Israel because it is her job to discern the movement of things, okay? They're coming to a brothel, no less, okay? Now, why they will come there, I don't know. But God was sending them there so because to the, the get this woman who was gangster. She was innovative, bold, discerning, and what a love she had for her family. That's the original gangsters. That's original gangster stuff. When you love the people of God, regardless. This is in the natural, this is in the spiritual. She was crafty. And you know the story and you can read it later, but the whole story is about how she got her people up and out of there alive in the face 
of disaster, in the, in the face of destruction, she got her people out because she was gangster. And she said to them, I'm trying to get down. She hid the spies. We got all that. And she said, verse 8, continue. Now before they lay down, she came up to them on the roof and said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land, that the terror of you has fallen on us, and that all the inhabitants of the land are faint-hearted because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were on the other side of I the Jordan. I told you she was smart, wise, intelligent, discerning. She had her ear to the door so she can see and understand and feel when the wind was blowing. <laughs> Continue. Sihon and Og, whom you utterly destroyed, and as soon as we heard these things, our hearts melted. Neither did there remain any more courage in anyone because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. Now therefore I beg you, swear to me by the Lord, since I have shown you kindness, that you also will show kindness to my father's house and give me a true token. And Gangster! Gangster! <laughs> She said in verse 13, what did she ask them to do? And spare my father. Spare my father. Spare my peoples. I love my peoples. I am on the, I'm the head of my household. I'm in a business. And it's my responsibility to take care of them. And when I hear the wind is blowing a certain kind of way, I'm on my job. Continue. My mother, my brothers, my sisters, and all that they have. That's the burden we should have for the people of God. We should not be divided against the people of God unless they are divided against us. <laughs> because we have a responsibility to have a burden, not only for them, all those that hear the voice of the original gangster. <laughs> all those that Jesus, that the Father draws to Jesus because no man can come to Jesus unless the triple OG is drawn. I'm just telling you. <laughs> they can't get to him. So we have to pray that the God of the harvest would draw the people to Jesus because he loves the souls of men. We go on, 2 Kings chapter 5. Because this is a young girl that's a gangster. <laughs> young girl. And 2 Kings chapter, she's like Mary. I didn't, I, I, Mary is a show enough a gangster. But I didn't want, because her, her story is fairly familiar. How gangster she was when the angel came. Come on. <laughs> how bold and innovative she was. That she went over to Elizabeth's house. She said, Elizabeth, I know. You understand what I'm getting ready to go through. But in 2 Kings chapter 5, uh, starting with verse 1. Now Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great and honorable man in the eyes of his master, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was also a mighty man of valor, but a leper. And the Syrians had gone out on raids and had brought back captive a young girl. This is a young girl. They bringing her back to be a slave <laughs> for her master. My girl is not standing around whining about her, <laughs> where, her homeland and where my mom, where my dad. My girl is on a mission because she gangster up in here. She already know that somehow or another, God's going to work this thing out. There's a reason why she had come over from where she was to where she was in, in that instance at that moment. Continue. She waited on Naaman's wife. Then she said to her mistress, If only my master were with the prophet who was in Samaria, for he would heal him of his leprosy. Look at my girl. My, this girl is gangster. She said, look, here, ain't even no problem. <laughs> ain't even, I know what I'm saying, ain't even no problem because I'm in the slang dictionary now. Come on. She said, ain't no problem here. <laughs> if he was in Samaria, the prophet would heal him. 
when you when you know that you know that you know that you know that you know you're a gangster up in here when you stick to your principles your values your understanding what pleases god you're gangster up in here my girl is gang she's a young girl know what she believes know what she's seen with her eyes it's a, she said, my, 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 my feet are fixed and my heart is fixed. I will not. Um, what, what word am I looking for? Betray what I know to be true. She gangster. That's all I'm saying. I know I'm getting a, a little bit more slangy as I go along because I'm, <laughs> she gangster. I'm not, I'm not saying she is gangster. I say she gangster. Okay, I'm just saying. <laughs> and the mighty men, come on. I'm not even going into the mighty men. David was OG in his family, okay? And all them folks that was with him, they were called the mighty men. of the, You can read the story yourself. First Samuel 22, 1 through 2. We're not going to read it. Second Samuel 23, 8 through. You can read all about the exploits of the men and the women that were with. You said women, I said women. Abigail was a, she was gangster. You, are you for real? I said the ones in his family. The ones that were his friends. Cause he was OG. And he had gangster people around him. People that knew and trusted and were innovative and that were genuine. And that would fight. Now we fight in prayer. Back then, they had to naturally fight their enemies and kill them. <laughs> but we fight in prayer and let God decide. Come on, God. You are awesome. You are the original gangster. Hebrews 11. All them folks up in there were gangsters. I'm just going to try to tell you that right now. <laughs> They were all gang because they were following in what? His footsteps. So they were all gangsters, these so-called heroes of faith. And it's starting with verse 1, Hebrews. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen, the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. Okay. Continue. I'm just drawing emphasis to it. By faith, Abel offered Come to on. God. Abel was gangster. <laughs> he offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. That he was righteous. Continue. God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he being dead, still, still speaks. speaks. <laughs> His blood is speaking from the ground. You know what it's speaking? You can't kill the righteous. You can't kill the righteous. <laughs> you can't do it. You can't see that's gangster stuff. You cannot kill the righteous. Yeah. Their physical body, yes. But not their spirit. The spirit of the righteous that were killed for righteousness sake are still speaking to us today. Continue. By faith, Enoch was now, taken away. Now, you know Enoch was straight up gangster, okay? <laughs> Continue. So that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony. He pleased God. That's enough to make you gangster. <laughs> That's a, a, enough to put you in the gangster family, that you please God. Continue. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. By faith, gangster. Noah. Come on, come on. <laughs> By faith, Noah. Gangster. Verse 8. By faith, Abraham. Gangster. Obey. Verse 9. Continue. By faith, he dwelt in the land of promise, as in a foreign country, dwelling in tents with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he waited for the city. When you're waiting, when you know that this 
is only the beginning of the show, but the best is yet to come. <laughs> when you're waiting, you're gangster. <laughs> you have, you know enough to know this can't be all there is. There's because there's no purpose in it at all because you die. See, and when you wait on the Lord, you gangster up in here. You realize you were born for a purpose. You wasn't born to live here and die. Because <laughs> it doesn't make any sense at all. Continue. Whose builder and maker is God. By faith, Sarah Come herself. On, she was gangster up in here. The Bible said she received strength to conceive seed. M Women don't have seed. Men do. We have an egg. But she was gangster. <laughs> <laughs> and she bore a child. Continue. She bore a child when she was past the age because she judged him faithful, faithful. who had promised. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you that's gangster. <laughs> she judged him what? Faithful who had promised. <laughs> Continue. Therefore, from one man and him as good as dead were born as many as the stars of the sky in multitude, innumerable as the sand which is by the seashore. These all died in faith, not having received, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off. Were now that's gangster them. when you see something, when you wait for God, you see something afar off. You don't, you don't have it yet, but you can taste it. You know it's going to happen because you understand purpose. Continue. Embrace them and confess that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For those who say such things declare plainly that they seek a homeland. And truly, if they had called to mind that country from which they had come out, they would have had opportunity to return. Verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. See, what a, ugh, these people, these people are gangster up in here. You see, you see, the, the, the OG and his family. <laughs> Continue. And he who had received the promises offered up his only begotten son, of whom it was said, In Isaac, your seed shall be called, concluding that God was able to raise him up. That he was able to raise him from the dead. Whatever you give God, make sure it's living. <laughs> Don't give him dead stuff. Stuff that you were going to throw away anyway. Stuff that don't mean anything to you. Give him something that means something to you. Continue. So he can raise it from the dead. Come on. From which he also received him in a figurative sense. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning on the top of his staff. By faith, Joseph... All these folks, I'm just trying to show you, all of them, they have a testimony of being gangster, of modeling their lives after and before the original gangster. Continue. By faith, 23, Moses. By faith, Moses, when he was born... Look at his parents, gangster. <laughs> when he was born, was they hidden. knew exactly, we can go on from there. <laughs> by faith, by faith, by faith, in verse 31, by faith, the harlot Rahab did not perish with those who did not believe when she received the spies with peace. And the scripture said, because it's now waxing bolder and bolder, because you can look throughout this book called the Bible and see gangsters. She said, and it says in verse 32, and what more shall I say? For the time shall fail me to tell of Gilead and Barak and Samson, Jephthah, also of David and Samuel and the prophet. What did they do? By faith, they, they seduced kingdom. They work righteousness. They obtain promises. Stop the mouths of lying. Quench the violence of fire. Escape the edge of the sword. Out of weakness was made strong because became valiant in battle, turned to flight the armies of the alien. Women received their dead, raised to life again. Gangsta. And it goes on and on, because we are the family of the original gangster. Hebrews 2, starting with verse 
9 through 13. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. Gangsta. Continue. For it was fitting for him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Gangsta. For both he who sanctifies and those who are being sanctified are all of one, for which reason he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Saying, I will Say. declare your name to my brethren. Triple OG. I'm going to declare your name. And the father said, I'm going to declare your name <laughs> to your brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will sing praise to you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here am I and the gangsters you have given me. Father, I thank you. I honor you. I bless you. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen.